All right, hello there, everybody. This is the Epic Game Guru, and yes, I'm finally here to explain a couple of tips and tricks here on Will to Live Online because I know that I get a lot of questions on how I'm making tokens so fast on Will to Live Online. The rate of which I do it is pretty goddamn insane, and how I do it is even more insane. So I will reveal every little tip and trick that I've done so far in Will to Live in order to be able to profit a lot in this game. I must warn you guys that in Will to Live Online, if you are going to play this game, I would 100% recommend starting with the no pk servers so players don't end up trying to harass you or anything while you're trying to get stuff done it does make the game a lot easier and for no pk servers it just stands for no player killer servers and those servers are 100 percent full-on pve with a lot less pvp and also more or less of the option to be able to deal with that in the future if you want to deal with pvp later on in the game so with all that being said let's go ahead and get started at your first starting point of the game you're going to end up starting in solar city which this place is pretty pretty damn good when it comes to getting missions done rather quickly so you'd be able to access the mailbox itself. I may even have to make a whole video explaining how the mailbox works in several different ways but I'll pretty much explain that later on in the future. What you're mainly going to be doing here in Solar City if you're trying to farm money and you're all the way down to the bottom of the barrel with money like you're absolutely tapped out with tokens then the mushroom farm location is definitely going to end up being your best friend at least for a good while until you get yourself back up on tokens once again. Again. The best place to farm for these mushrooms, of course, is on the top right of Soul City, and you're gonna be wanting to grab every little thing you see on the ground there, and I mean all of it. You're gonna need to grab both flowers, amorite, freaking little mushrooms, set mushrooms, milk mushrooms, and they're all worth money. Not a single one of them is useless, so if you take the time to just harvest around like crazy, you'll be surprised how much money you actually make after harvesting for about less than two to five minutes. Alright, so after playing like Mario Brothers for a long ass time and then harvesting a shitload of mushrooms and flowers and whatnot you're gonna need to sell them to somebody obviously do not sell mushrooms flowers or even the amorite mushroom to Rafiq he is going to rip you off hardcore on the price what you want to sell them to is barman and doctor doctor will buy the flowers as well as the amorite mushrooms while the actual uh, barman will buy the mushrooms themselves there is one thing I'm going to have to point out right now do not just straight up trade sell immediately to barman through the regular sell items tab if you do this you will lose a lot of money go under i have goods and then give him all your mushrooms he will give you double the price of what all your mushrooms are i mean just look at that absolutely amazing the doctor will also have the same exact choice to be able to sell mushrooms to, so do the exact same thing as you do at Barman, and he will give you an even double more price for both your flowers and your emerite. Flowers and emerite are only worth about 0.50 tokens apiece, so it's better to just give them to doctor to get the whole amount versus just getting a half amount that you would have gotten with Rafiq or the regular sell tab at doctor as well. Another really good way to make money is to always check the commission tab. You'd be surprised how much money you can make selling items that you never thought would be worth value in the game. Just check under commission, check what things are not being bought, check what things are being bought, and if there are no things of that item available in the commission store, you might be lucky and you might be the first one to sell it in a while, making your money gain a lot quicker. Also be warned, I would not recommend selling items to the exact amount, like if you have an item that's worth like a huge price tag, like you want to put it there for let's say the max price is 1400 and that's the max it can be, more than likely players are not going to be willing to buy it for that much, so you really got to like like move and shindig the price a little bit to figure out which one is going to be selling for that amount. There's also other specific commissionable items that are always going to sell because everyone usually needs it, such as coal or something like that, but I'll go ahead and explain all that later on down this video. After doing a bunch of missions at the beginning, you'll eventually end up here at the mining zone, the entire biggest hub when it comes to making money in the game. A lot of players tend to show up here to be able to gather up coal, other resources, polymer off spiders in the spider cave. This place basically has it all and it's pretty easy to get to. I will place a map in the description below if you guys want to know about the teleport locations so you don't have to waste time a lot running to locations. That is usually the one thing that throws people off in the game. So I'll 
go ahead and link that down below for you guys if you're interested but once you do teleport and end up here at the mine zone this is where the game gets a little crazy because of the amount of stuff that you have to gather in here entirely through the cave system and also a bunch of other crazier missions that you have to do at the very beginning in order to progress further into the game when you get here you'll often have to start out with a half durability pickaxe and that pickaxe is god awful even i'm not going to shortcut you here the the pickaxe is just awful that you get at the beginning at the mine zone once you do get a better pickaxe which would be the advanced pickaxe you're gonna want to get as much coal as physically possible as much ferrous metal as physically possible and if possible try to mine for try to mine for non-ferrous metal and if you have the hunting knife it will save you a lot more time on trying to get over here without wasting any form of ammunition if you are level 10 and above you can always buy an advanced pickaxe and whatever pdas you need for both the mine and the furnace off manef they are a bit pricey and expensive but you can always find a new source of way to make money aside from the actual mushroom farm the missions actually do give you a pretty decent amount of cash as well so by the time you get here you will be spending quite a bit of time down the mines after setting up your equipment and buying whatever pickaxes you needed off mine if the mine is located right across from the actual store and private storage itself next to the furnace and there will be a guard waiting right there just to I have no idea why he's there but that's besides the point let's just go ahead and get down there and try to get the resources we need. There used to be a really fast way to get down from the mines but now it's chained off because players used to be getting stuck in the mines down to the elevator shaft so they just said screw it players were just gonna have to go all the way down the stairs like they naturally did before so this will take a moment let me just get all the way back down the stairs. Once you made it down the stairs, you're going to notice on your map if you've bought in the PDA to the mineshaft, you don't necessarily need it. It just makes things a little bit more convenient to be able to see on the map where you're going. You're going to notice that the main entrance is filled with nothing but rats, but the good thing is, is that we're not going to be mining here because we don't want to get bothered by NPCs or AIs trying to kill us while we're trying to get the main resources out of there. If you want to safely mine coal and ferrous metal and non-ferrous metal without needing to worry about any form of AI trying to kill you, always turn right on the mine shaft and from there you'll find a lot of ferrous and non-ferrous to silicon metal to actual coal that we need which is the most valuable thing because you can't do anything without it. So just simply run all the way down the shaft and make it past B21 and then from there down the middle side there will be coal, ferrous metal, non-ferrous metal and a little bit of some other unique nodes you might be able to find. There's a lot of mining to do down this shaft and I spent a lot of time down here if I'm trying to commission metals or actual resources that players need mainly the coal itself. Coal is incredibly easy to identify as well it just looks like a giant massive black rock which you're gonna have to use your pickaxe to mine out of. You can't mine anything out of here without a pickaxe. Trust me I think I've heard of players who have actually tried even grenades to try to get the rocks out. Terrible idea. Also as a quick notice of warning do not go towards the event area if you are barely coming on down here. Don't even try to attempt it even if you have a bandana or a, P a PBM I believe it was called. Even a gas mask is not going to work really well there. You are going to need anti-rate although there are pretty good drops on that event if you do have the courage to do so and the right resources to do so. You can also mark the actual rocks themselves on the map so you can mark all the nodes of where they are just for convenience sake. You also do not really need the PDA map for the mines. If you know exactly where these are just simply mark them as well while the map is blank so you can get a good idea of how the mine shaft is. I've seen players work down here without the necessary need of a map. Quite frankly those guys obviously already know the mine shaft from the back of their hand so it's completely optional how you want to go through the mines when it comes to mining, but it is a very long process, but it does pay well. Right here we have a ferrous metal node. I'll show you guys what all the nodes look like so you don't get confused. It's always going to have this weird silver-like type of metallic look to it with a little bit of grayish brownish type of tint. Depending on your gamma, it's going to look a little bit different, but you always will identify the ferrous metals looking like that. They all practically look the same, so that's one of them. One of the hardest to see nodes here is actually this non-ferrous metal looking kind, which is supposed to be copper after it's melted down the furnace. This one really does need to be marked if you do or don't have the map because it's easy to just run past this one. I would completely recommend marking it on the map because if you haven't been playing the game for a while it is nice to have the map location to understand what you're looking for. And this one is completely chance based of whether or not you get lucky depending on what your character class is. It's also mainly dependent on whether or not your mining skill on percentage is really high. People who have obviously a 100% mining percentage on their character parameters or in this case my bad your character status will allow you to get resources a lot easier faster and with a better chance 
chance of getting something out of the material. Or in this case, note. Ironically enough, I discovered during this entire video that I ended up finding a different kind of note that looks nothing like the ferrous metal or anything else in the game, only to find out that the metal itself is actually ferrous metal. It took me a while to realize that these little chunk of rocks, as long as they have just a little bit of brown in them, that's actually ferrous metal. And if you're lucky, some of them that are kind of hidden could have none ferrous metal. So that's just something to keep a mental note of. One last thing I need to mention here in this video explaining the mines at least, these type of nodes avoid them at all costs. These are the lead nodes and they give you absolutely nothing. They are just not worth mining at all. They don't even give you a lot of XP like the rock nodes do. So avoid trying to get lead off these as much as physically possible. I chipped the hell out of it and it only gave me one lead in return and deposit. That is a horrible return value versus just breaking down the batteries and making your tokens that way. Okay, now that you are done picking out your black rocks, your brown rocks, your other rocks or whatever rocks you manage to find down there, mainly just coal ferrous metal and non-ferrous metal, and sometimes if you got the time you'll probably pick up some silicon let's go ahead and talk about the next important thing in the game and that's going to be the furnace which is indicated by a big giant pipe of black smoke coming through the sky in the same area as the mine shaft so although coal is worth quite a bit in the commission by itself basically 40 tokens a piece which is a lot and based on how much coal you can get down there which would usually probably be way past 100 you can make a pretty good decent amount of money on the commission just from doing that however it is much more valuable if you just turn anything that you have from the coal from the ferrous metal and non-ferrous metal into ingots the ingots are worth way more than what the coal is obviously because they do take time to make and depending on which commission zone you're in you can either be from Tunnels, Corvi, or Solar City. It's better to mail yourself some to be able to figure out if it's going to be worth commissioning in those zones versus one over the other. Every zone's different on commission pricing and every zone's completely different on what the resource is being used for. So if you can find a place where everyone's needing that resource and you commission it, people are more likely to buy off for that ingot. So take the time to check out the commissions whenever you can to figure out how much your ingots are going to be worth or whether or not it's just worth it to just sell the coal in general, but that would be basically scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to mining. Now then, let's get to one of my favorite token farming zones in the entire game, because you don't even have to rely on commission to be able to make money here, and that is the lizard hunting. Welcome to possibly one of the best money makers in the game at least for the beginning statuses of levels you can come here around level between 8 to 13 if you want to but obviously beginning levels are at 8. Now after you completed a couple of quests in the game there's going to be a point where you're going to be able to talk to and meet up with Cosmich. Cosmich has one of the best farmable missions for commission and also has one of the best monsters to sell parts off. He'll usually be in the cabin on the right side, he's never going to move from there, and he's always going to have a repeatable mission for owls. Owls, or AWL stimulators is what some people call them, will give you a pretty damn good price on commission. AWL stimulators, or in this case, well, I'm, I'm just going to call them speed stimulators because that's basically what they're for, give you infinite stamina for 60 seconds. These are highly value to higher level players and they are incredibly useful definitely a huge upgrade from ciders and they do not cause any form of negative effects so aside of saying that the actual lizards themselves drop tremendously expensive items we're talking from horns claws damaged lizard skins and good lizard meat are all worth high in value we're talking like damn near 2,000 tokens per run and each run doesn't even take that long you could spend out here less than two minutes and make about 2,000 tokens easy even less time depending on how fast the lizards are spawning and i always hoard up a bunch of vodkas just to be able to come here repeat the mission constantly and get more of those running stimulators or stamina stimulators either way awls they're worth a lot and a lot of commissions i have not seen them less than no less than a thousand that's how expensive they are they do go lower but the max i've seen them low is about 700 there are rare occasions where people did farm the lizards a lot in the server so you might see awls worth a lot less but that really completely depends on which commission station you're in all of them make a big difference on price and the lizards are by far the easiest to farm out of all the creatures in the game when it comes to making money periodically. This is one of the best farming zones 
in the entire game for levels 8 to 13 and higher depending on what you want to farm for regardless. Either way guys, I'm going to go ahead and just do one last thing on this video. I did a few tests to see how much the actual lizard meat was worth on cooking. So we're just going to skip right to that after I was done farming off these guys for a bit. Alright, I managed to finish my mission enough to get enough lizard venom, so I just simply grab it, repeat the mission, and if you guys need food and water, Cosmetch also has food and water in a bag. Just take a plastic bottle out of there and take the canned food that's in the storage box. You can then refill the water at the well and then just drink it from there and eat from there. Alright, I finally made it all the way back to Solar City, and as I said before, I'm going to try to cook all the meat as well as get some charcoal out of this. I'm going to increase the price of the meat barely by 5 more tokens. It's not necessary, but it is something fun to do if you're trying to increase your survival percentage without needing to basically get yourself killed out there. Alright, I'm already done cooking all my meat. It's not going to increase the token wage that much. It's only going to be 5 tokens extra per meat, so it is something to do fondly if you're trying to like increase the amount of survival percentage you have without the need of actually causing damage damage to yourself it is a good way to increase your survival percentage and if you want to do it for fun and you got plenty of wood to burn over for charcoal then by all means go for it this does not even include the extra money i made off the other list of parts that i held back in my sack all the way back at cosmic so this is a really good way to farm money without the need of even requiring the commission and if with the commission just sell the awl sell them for the price range that makes sense for any of the commission zones you are in and you are golden when it comes to making tokens so either way guys, I hope this entire little bit of a guide helped you all. I know that this is pretty basic stuff. If you guys have played the game for a while, you would basically know all three of these different ways to make money regardless. But for anybody new coming, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave me go ahead go ahead and just leave them in the comments below. I will try my best to answer them. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video that much. And I'll see you all next time.